why are my GarageBand files so big? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at that very question. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And if you've been using GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad for any length of time, and you have an iPhone or iPad that is struggling for storage space, then this video is for you, because I'm going to explain exactly why and how those GarageBand project files get so gosh darn big. So let's jump in now to the iPhone and take a look. So here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone. Now this is actually a follow-up video to a previous video where I took a look at what was inside a GarageBand.band file. So if you haven't checked that one out, that'll be linked up there down in the description and at the end of this video as well. So I do suggest checking that one out before you dive into this one, but if you wanna check this one and then go backwards, that's fine too. So what we did in that one is we actually zipped up a couple of my project files here. So I've got two versions of my song six and eight. We zipped those up and then we took a look using the preview mode and exactly what is inside those files. We then jumped over to the PC and took a look there. And that's what we're going to be doing in a bit more detail in this one. So we've got these zip files here though. These are the exact same song, but one is 379 meg and one is 1.65. And when this happened, I thought, wow, this is a great example of exactly why our project files become so big. So we're going to be taking a look at these in more detail here in Windows so we can take a look at the file sizes. But the main difference between these two is that GarageBand has rendered out all of the audio files and it does that as part of its magic optimizing performance. So if you've ever got that optimizing performance come up and say, thought, I wonder what that actually is doing. One of the things that it does amongst all the other voodoo that Apple put in there is it actually renders out your tracks as AIF files, which means it can then play those back without having to render all the effects and all the other things in real time. So it's, it's a way to help your performance of your GarageBand. So it is a good thing in some ways, but it does also result in these large files. So let's jump in and have a look at these two files in Windows to see exactly what's going on here. So here are our two zip files. We've got our version three and our version four there. We'll open up version three to start with. So we'll double click on that. We'll double click on the .band file. And here is our folder structure here. So we've got our caches.nosync. And in this case, this is empty. It's got very little information in it. The same with our freeze files no sync. And this is the one that when we look at version four, you'll see makes up the big difference between the file sizes of these two. We've got our media, which just holds all of the WAV files of all of the different tracks. And I mentioned in the other video, but this is not the whole track. This is each individual chunk of track. So if you split it, you've got two separate files there. It's going to render those and save those out separately. And however you name them, and you can see my naming conventions are terrible here, but whatever you use to name them is what it will name it in here as well. And then finally, we've got the output, which is here, which is when we output our file as a WAV or an M4A. It saves a copy here as well as saving the output. It saves a copy here. So there's a trick and and tip number one as to why your files grow is that when you export them, it'll put a copy of that exported file in your project. So if you've got a really small file, so say you're only using virtual instruments and it's 10 meg, and then you export and it's a 50 meg WAV file, suddenly your project will jump from 10 meg to 60 meg because it's including that WAV file. So there you go. That is the number one reason why things change and why you get those larger files. The main reason though as to why the files get so big is this optimizing performance situation we were talking about. Out before. So let's jump into this version four now. And apologies that these are so small. It's uh, You can't sort of zoom in in the details mode here. So we'll jump in. Now this has got the same sort of folder structure that we had before. Uh, we're going to open up this freeze files dot no sync. And the big difference here is you'll see that we've got a heap of files in here. So these are all of our different tracks and instruments. So you can see these first three are instruments. So we've got instrument two, five, and six. So these are my uh, drummer track, the clarinet track, the piano track. So the virtual instruments that I had. And all of these are the rest of my tracks. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 tracks here, which are all of my audio recorder tracks. So these are my guitars. These are my vocals that I have recorded in this song. And if you've been following along with the song, you'll know what all of these tracks are. Again, there'll be a link up there and down there if you want to check out this song song in more detail. But the majority of these uh, files are anywhere between sort of five or nine uh, meg for sort of the, some of the smaller ones. The reason that they're smaller is that they are ones that are just sort of background vocals that are only coming in for one section. So that's why they'll be smaller because these aren't entire files. Because I guess the other question folks have is, can I use these now that it's rendered these out? Can I use these as, uh, as stem files to import somewhere else? 
Well, no, because they're not actually the full length of the track. I've got a video coming out very soon, and it may be out already, which will be linked there if it is, showing you how to actually do this. But these files are not going to be good because they're going to start at various different points. Unless they're all completely all the way across, there's the tip as to what we will be doing in the future, then you won't be able to do that. But these are all of our files, and this is why these are going to be so big, is that we've got in here, and how much, let's just go and see how much of this, we'll go to our properties. So this is, oh, it won't tell us because we're inside a zip file, but it's quite a lot. You can see there, it's literally hundreds, almost, almost a gigabyte, more than a gigabyte, in fact, worth of files that we have here. It's just that we're inside a zip file, so it's not giving us that data. So that is the number two reason. And there's one more thing that I wanted to show you in here in fact if we go to our output we've got not only that first 6 and 8 version 2 wave file we've now got 6 and 8 version 4 wave file and this is something for those of you that use version control which I highly recommend that you do the problem with version control is that every time you change the version number it'll save out the wave file and it will leave the old ones in there so you can transfer it to your PC delete out the old ones here transfer it back to your original device and it will not have those in there anymore so that is one way that you can save on some space if you want to to. But yeah, if you change the version, render out a WAV file, add another version number, render out a WAV file, if you do that to nine times, you're going to have nine copies of your WAV file of your final project sitting right there on your device inside your project. So that's another reason why we have it. So they're the sort of the two main things. They're our output that we have here. And then there's those freeze files that are created here by the uh, optimizing performance happening, freezing out those files as AIF files, and then having those there for graph band to play. So there you go. I hope you found this useful and that it explained a little bit about why those GarageBand files get so big here in your GarageBand projects. And that is going to do it for this video. If you've got comments, questions, suggestions, or your own tricks and tips and hacks and information about GarageBand files or about what's included, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks again for watching. If you'd like to check out two more videos, including that original video I was talking about in this one, they're linked down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.